Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Wright here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I have a couple of patients who attended with blocked earwax and in addition, what, upon the removal of the earwax, we noticed that the patient had retracted eardrums, um, more specifically in the attic, the superior region of the um, eardrum, also known as the pars flaccida. So whilst you're watching me just removing the wax, um, I'll just explain what a retracted septum eardrum is and how it's caused. So um, behind the eardrum, we have what we call the middle ear. And the middle ear um, is a cavity that should be air filled. And ideally, the air pressure in the middle ear cavity should be equivalent um, and equal to the air pressure within the ear canal and therefore the atmosphere. And when you've got the air pressure equal either side of the eardrum, that's when the eardrum is most mobile. And therefore, that's when the eardrum vibrates the most in response to sound waves hitting it. Um, although air can enter the outer part of the ear, so the, the ear canal, uh, just through the entrance of the ear canal, um, for air to enter the middle ear, it has to travel up the nose and then up a tube called the eustachian tube. So the eustachian tube is a small tube orifice that connects the middle ear cavity to the back of the nose, the nasopharynx. And the eustachian tube is typically closed under normal resting state at the back of the nose, but during the course of the day, completely um, involuntary, when we swallow, yawn or chew, the muscles either side of the eustachian tube contract uh, where it connects to the back of the nose, that causes your station tube to open. Um, air can momentarily um, enter or exit the ear, uh, middle ear cavity to equalise the air pressure. And then any fluid that may have accumulated behind the eardrum in the middle ear can also drain out. The problem is, um, if that eustachian tube gets blocked for whatever reason at the back of the nose, for example, if you've got a cold or congestion or um, uh, some sort of... Um, obstruction at the back of the nose, um, allergic rhinitis, um, a nasal polyp, etc. Um, then the eustachian tube fails to open, uh, which means that there's no air passing into the middle ear cavity, which means the, the remaining air in the middle ear gets absorbed by all the cells within the middle ear uh, until a vacuum is created, so there's no more air left. Um, a vacuum is created and that causes a suction effect. A bit like when we go on the airplane, the eardrum gets pulled inwards, it gets sucked in. And it normally, typically, uh, gets sucked in in the, in the attic. And I'm just going to circle that in a moment on the screen because we've just cleared all this wax. Um, there's a bit of wax in the attic retraction. Now, it's, it's not ingressed. And if I put place a sucker there, it probably touched the, the hammer bone, which would be uncomfortable. So... I'm confident it's not ingressed, but that circular region there, we call that the pars flaccida, the attic region of the eardrum. And um, in this patient, the attic is withdrawn, it's sucked in due to negative middle ear pressure. And that particular part of the eardrum is prone to getting retracted because it's a bit thinner, hence the name pars flaccida, than the rest of the eardrum called the pars tensor. So the eardrum has three membranes. The outermost membrane is um, made up of the same skin that lines the the ear canal, um, the inner two thirds of the ear canal, the uh, what we call squamous stratified uh, epithelial cells. So, uh, and there, it's a very very thin layer of skin. The innermost membrane is made up of the mucosa, which is like a uh, the same skin that lines the back of your nose. It's moist and it can secrete fluids. And then we have a middle membrane made up of fibrous tissue. Um, now. The fibrous tissue that's, uh, so the middle membrane in the pars flaccida, uh, it's not as well formed as um, the fibrous tissue in the pars tense, and that's what gives the pars tensor its, its strength, its rigidity, um, and because it's not, the, because that middle membrane is more diffusely uh, developed in the pars flaccida, it's, le it's less taunt and it's more prone to atmospheric changes, and pressure changes, so that region can get pulled in. So patient one who we treated before um, has got nasal congestion, they're suffering from a cold, got catarrh. We confirmed the presence of negative middle ear pressure doing a, a pressure test called tympanometry, 
And so we diagnose it as eustachian tube dysfunction. Sometimes uh, if the eustachian tube dysfunction doesn't, uh, it doesn't resolve itself, because quite often it can just resolve itself once your cold nasal congestion's gone, if that's the root cause. Um, you get fluid buildup behind the eardrum. Um, so the middle ear becomes full of fluid as opposed to air. And when you've got fluid in the middle ear, the eardrum is less able to vibrate, if at all. And that fluid can then get infected. We call that acute otitis media with effusion, uh, also known as glue ear. Um, so it all stems to uh, the eustachian tube. So that's a very important structure in the, in the middle ear. And most middle ear disorders, pathologies, infections can arise as a result of a, a blocked eustachian tube. So patient two, uh, we just cleaned up their left ear. There is a bit of wet wax line in the canal wall. I'm not too interested in removing that. Um, patient was a young, younger patient. Um, we just wanted to get this blockage out for them. A bit of wax is also very healthy for us. The ear wax provides both a physical and chemical barrier. So quite often, if you leave a bit of wax, it's not a bad thing. Uh, we have wax for a reason. Um, so the, the physical barrier helps um, protect the the skin, delicate layers, skin that lines the ear canal. So it's almost like a sheet of veneer earwax. It, it kind of, it, it's a thin film that lines the ear canal. And so it provides that physical barrier against bacteria and fungi and viruses. And it also acts like a chemical barrier because earwax is slightly acidic and the acidity helps to inhibit certain bacterial and fungal growth. So a bit of earwax is actually good for us and we don't want to be damaging the lining of skin. I was doing a bit of, um, I had a patient who attended with a uh, quite a life-threatening uh, condition the other week called necrotizing otitis externa and that's an infection of the, the ear canal but it's a really, really, really severe um, infection and it's very common in diabetic patients, the elderly and the immunocompromised. You may see here this patient has used a cotton bud, you can see the, the, the wool fibres there. And it can stem, uh, so necrotizing otitis externa stems from the ear canal itself, uh, more specifically the, the juncture between the cartilage and the bones, the inner, um, the, the outer and inner two thirds of the ear canal where they meet. I'll just come back to that in a moment. Um, just clean up this ear again. It's a bit, a bit of wax around the edge. I'm not too concerned again. Uh, get, you're going to see the attic retraction here. I'm going to circle it for you. There we are. As you can see, the eardrum sucked in in the pars flaccida, the attic region. Yes, so the necrotizing otitis externa, so uh, that can be triggered by trauma course of the ear canal. So if you nip the ear canal, um, which a lot of patients do, trying to clean their own ears. And sometimes it's debatable at the moment whether it's water can also play a role in that. So that's why I always recommend, uh, advise patients to avoid water in the ear because it can lead to sometimes serious ear infection. So just going back to this patient, that's all the wax you saw there on the tissue. Um, this patient also has uh, nasal congestion, they've got a cold and we did the pressure test which confirmed a blocked eustachian tube. So both patients are going to use nasal decongestants and um, the Otovent balloon which helps to repressurize the middle ear and if they're still symptomatic they're going to visit their GP in seven days. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video guys. Keep well and speak soon. Thank you, bye.